Hi, my name is Terry Shannon. Thanks for taking the opportunity to join us in this discussion on leadership. I've had the good fortune over a 40 year career encompassing both time in the corporate world and the nonprofit sector in senior leadership positions to be exposed to a variety of different leadership individuals and styles and personalities along the way. Each of them gave me a little more insight into what it takes to be successful as a leader in today's world. In recent years as a certified executive coach, I've had the opportunity to work with many emerging leaders in their own organizations to help them get a better feel for the ways to approach things, the things to look at. In addition, I've had the privilege of working as a volunteer at William and Mary in the executive partner program with our grad and undergrad students, coaching and mentoring, as well as I've had the opportunity to teach in our online MBA program, the Leadership for the 21st Century course. All of these experiences have deepened my understanding of leadership and, out, and the outcome is the creation of a simple framework for you to consider as you go down the path for your own personal development. Leadership is a lifetime development opportunity. I'm learning things every day and I hope you agree that you will as well. Today's business leaders, you're facing an incredible new challenge, unprecedented uh, with COVID-19 and all of the impacts it has had. It's really thrown a curveball at all of us, never seen before. It's impacting businesses big and small. It's forced us to broaden our perspectives and be open to new ideas and approaches we never thought um, before we'd have to have to look at. It's definitely uncharted waters. I encourage you to take 20 minutes at some point and look at a, a YouTube video by a, a gentleman by the name of DeWitt Jones. The title of it and what you would search for is celebrate what's right with the world. And it's all about changing your lens and changing your perspective. DeWitt uses, he's a former uh, National Geographic photographer. He uses his photography and the pictures in his photography to tell a story about changing perspective and looking at things initially from a, a shot up of, uh, on top of a mountain at a field of flowers and then using a different lens and a different lens and a different lens and getting all the way down to seeing a bee on a flower and how that can change your look outlook on things. Um, it's a tremendous story. 20 minutes, I think you'll thoroughly enjoy it. Carrying DeWitt Jones' um, theme to the next level, I'd like you to consider a simple framework for you to consider <clears throat> as a leader. Simply stated, increased awareness increases our choices, which will lead to better outcomes and better results. So let me say that again. Increased awareness increases our choices, which will lead to better outcomes and better results. Increasing awareness begins with self-awareness. The more we truly know about ourselves, our tendencies, our biases, our weaknesses, our strengths, the more we know about ourselves, the more effective we can become as a leader. How do we do that? You really need to be honest with yourself. You need to be willing to look in a mirror and see yourself um, in ways that you maybe have never done that. There are a couple of um, assessments that you might want to consider taking, and we'll get you the information and details on them. The first one I'd like you to consider, it's called the Big Five. Um, and it, it's, a doc, it's, it's an assessment that you can take online. It looks at uh, how you deal with stress. It looks at introversion versus extroversion. It looks at your degree of openness, your willingness to accommodate. Um, and your goal motivation, how all of those things work. Another assessment is called the uh, Thomas Kilman Conflict Mode Instrument. What the, what the TKI looks at is five different 
ways that we deal with conflict from competing to collaborating to compromising avoiding um, and accommodating and it, it identifies our tendencies uh, where we tend to gravitate when we run into conflict kinds of situations another individual assessment is one called strengths finders what strengths finders looks at there are 35 different strengths that it identifies, and it will identify your top five strengths. And the concept being not as much what you need to work on to strengthen your weaknesses, but how you can use your strengths to your advantage as a leader. And it also helps you identify where your gaps are, so as you build your leadership team and your management team at your organization, you're bringing the right kinds of people in that can help complement what you are and what you do. The final one is emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is such a critical um, situation for leaders today. Um, studies have shown again and again and again those individuals with those leaders with the highest motion, emotional intelligence and that's all about uh, awareness and connection and the ability to develop relationships all of those things um, the most successful leaders are the ones that have the highest level of emotional intelligence so that's all about self-awareness and that's the first step of, of awareness the second area of awareness is awareness of others you may have heard of a, um, a phrase, walk a mile in my shoes. I'm going to add a little um, segment on to that. Walk a mile in my shoes, but first take your shoes off. If you think about what that means, it's all about being able to see things through someone else's perspective. But to be able to do that, you've got to leave your biases, your judgments, your um, uh, experiences at the door. Um, that's not not easy to do by any imagination because the first reaction we all have when we encounter a situation is to use our own backgrounds and our own experiences to be able to judge a specific scenario and we use those experiences and we jump the judgment right away the ability to step back from that and ask questions through uh, a concept called active listening, being able to hear what people are saying and being able to hear what's not being said. My bet is that at some point over the past couple of weeks, you were having a conversation with somebody and as they're going, they're, they're uh, telling you a story or telling you about a particular situation in your mind, you go, boy, I'm, uh, they're not telling me something. I'm missing something. What that is, is your active listening skills um, coming to the forefront. It's causing you, based on body language, eye contact, um, for, for you to be able to recognize that something is missing, something is not there. And your ability not to jump to judgment, but to ask follow-on questions. Boy, tell me more about that situation. Or help me understand how you came to that conclusion. What kinds of things did you consider? Those kinds of questions to be able to get things, uh, uh, um, to, to get the conversation moving along in a more effective fashion. Another little saying that I'm sure you've heard is the golden rule. The golden rule is treat people um, how, uh, how you would want to be treated. I want to put a little twist on that called the platinum rule. The platinum rule is treat people how they want to be treated. And to be able to do that, you've got to be able to increase your awareness of them, of their perspective, of their understanding, of their biases, of their experiences, all those kinds of things. You've got to constantly be reading body language, the eye contact, uh, you know, the arms, if you see the crossed arms, um, their head down, um, they're leaning back, they're leaning forward. All of those things send signals. Studies have shown that only 7% of what we communicate is through the words we use. 
the rest of it is the tone of voice, the pace of the voice, the eye contact, um, the body position. All of those things are designed to increase awareness of others. The third area of awareness is situational awareness. Folks have, all, have sometimes asked me, um, Terry, what's your leadership style? And my answer is always, it depends. It depends on the situation. If our house is on fire, I'm going to be a whole different kind of leader than if I'm working with a, um, a, a, a business executive in, in a senior position in a coaching kind of scenario. Daniel Goleman has written numerous articles identifying six different leadership styles. The commanding or coercive, you know, that demands compliance. Um, this is what I want you to do. This is how I want you to do it. That kind of style. That visionary who mobilizes folks based on a vision. Boy, this is what I want, want to create. Do you want to join me? And it, you're inspiring that participation along the way. The affiliative style, which creates harmony and emotional bonds with folks. You really connect from a relationship standpoint. The democratic, um, where you're forging consensus, where you're getting people to agree upon and buy in to an idea, a concept, a goal um, that you're all going after versus being your goal that they just have to follow. The pace setting style leadership, it forges, cons it, it really sets the bar high, um, you know, the, to achieve that next level, that we can do it, we can go after it. And then the coaching style, which is really all about involving and, in, and developing people for the future um, and, and bringing that next leader to the forefront of things. So the, the, the key to situational leadership is understanding that it depends on the scenario that you're encountering as to what style is appropriate and to being able to have the presence of mind to be able to um, identify that in the heat of a conversation or in, the, in a specific scenario and be able to apply it appropriately um, as we as you go forward. You know, bringing this all together now, today more than ever folks are, are looking to leaders for guidance and there's a variety of different experiences that folks are having. I would encourage you to consider that's the simple model that I've outlined for you over the last uh, five or six minutes. And if you remember nothing else from today's conversation, remember this simple phrase, increased awareness increases your choices, which lead to better outcomes and better results. Increased awareness of self, of others, and the situation you're involved with will lead to more choices and better outcomes. Thanks for your time.